Tears of the Kingdom has an absolutely massive map with not only new locations on the overworld, but also sky islands and the entire existence of the depths, which is the entire width and length of the map. Yeah, it's pretty massive. And with all these brand new locations and locations returning or changing from Breath of the Wild, we have a lot of secret places that a lot of people could have missed within this game. So the same way we did with The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, today we are diving into the map and world of The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom to find locations that you guys maybe skipped over, haven't found yet, or probably just outright missed altogether. Now, if you guys want to comment your locations that you think are either special, unique, or just interesting that some people might have missed, comment them down below. This can be anywhere from a big area to a small little area, something that's just not even that magnificent, but something that you just find interesting. Comment them down below and exactly where to find them and you could appear in the next video. Be descriptive and make sure you leave lots of details as to where to find it, as sometimes it might be hard for me to find your spot, but thank you so much for tuning in. And guys, please make sure you leave a like and subscribe to stay up to date on all things The Legend of Zelda. We are very close to 250,000 subscribers, so let's see how many people we can get to subscribe from this one video. Stop what you're doing, just hit that like button and subscribe real quick, it'll only take a second. Alright, now let's jump into seven locations that you probably missed within The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. The first location we have here is Bloopy Burrow, which is southwest of Hyrule Castle down in the depths. Travel to the Napanos Light Route and just go west directly from there and you'll find a giant cavern in the ground called the Bloopy Burrow. And that's exactly what it is. It's like a nesting spot for Bloopies. They are everywhere. You'll find them in little cave entrances, little holes along the sides of the mountain, walking by the waterways, literally all over this area. So you can actually land here and farm rupees from these bunnies simply just by flying through the air and using bullet time to just spam rupees out of them which is really cool there's also tons of pose to collect like lost souls all gathered around here which is pretty interesting and also a pink cherry blossom tree sitting here in the middle so it must be some type of holy resting place or sacred resting place where there's lots of souls gathering around this area which is pretty interesting but it's just fun to kind of run throughout the holes in the cave areas and just kind of play around down here it's a really beautiful spot and it's a spot I think everybody should visit at least once. There is a long secret tunnel that takes you from Lookout Landing all the way to beneath Hyrule Castle and this is called the Royal Hidden Passage. Head for the emergency shelter in Lookout Landing and down there you'll be able to blow tons of rocks out of the way to go through a tunnel that will send you on a literal adventure. There's also a bargaining statue down there that obviously you can trade your hearts for stamina or vice versa but yes it is a very long maze where you'll be taking out rocks and blowing them up or using Yonobo to knock them out of your way all the way throughout this tunnel. And you'll go through various different rooms, even one homing a Stalnox, and you'll find some Hyrule Castle dungeon rooms, which homes different types of swords and soldier gear. But if you keep on pushing, you'll get to an end area where you'll take a spiral staircase all the way to the top area of the castle. And here you'll find a slate that reads, Deep beneath this land, our mighty first ruler imprisoned the Demon King. To ensure the king's magic would hold, we erected a castle here to protect this sacred site. Without the castle in place, the site may be disturbed allowing the Demon King's hatred and rage to be revived. The preservation of this castle is therefore tied to the prosperity of the kingdom. May it watch over in eternal peace, which is a pretty cool piece of Hyrule Castle history there, showing why the castle was built in this location in the first place, to help seal and hide Ganondorf away, so that way no one messed with the ensealment, and that way he didn't get freed earlier. But you can continue to go up this spiral staircase, and there are rooms full of enemies and treasures to collect, but eventually you'll get to the top, where you can actually use a sin to go through the floor and boom you're at the bottom part of Hyrule Castle above ground now. This one is a little sad yet sweet yet creepy especially if you've ever played Ocarina of Time you'll know kind of where I'm going with this. There is a well in Kakariko Village where if you drop down it'll send you in a little maze and at the end of the maze there is a diary that you can read but it's not just any diary. The diary is from Dorian's wife, the one who was kidnapped and killed by the Yiga. She made a cookbook down there and it was all of her family's favorite foods and she also talks about her family a lot. She talks about her husband and she talks about her kids as well and it's very sweet as she knows exactly what they love to eat and she knows the recipes for all of them and she just kind of says some last goodbyes and 
it's just a really heartbreaking, heartwarming moment, and it's just sad. But it gets creepy as well, because some of the walls on the maze actually looks like it has dried up blood all over it. And we know the history with the Sheikah and the well from The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, as it's a very creepy place down there. It's where lots of very horrible things happen in Hyrule's kingdom, but we're not talking about that right now. But with this well, if you ascend through the cave right where the diary is, you'll get to the top of the mountain and see a single silent princess sitting on the top, which is just the final touch. And it's just so sweet that they decided to make such an in-depth story like this that didn't even need to be told. But yep, it just shows that Dorian's wife is now resting at peace. I almost wish there was a way that we could tell him that we found the diary and that we have all the recipes and just share the information that we found. That would have been the cherry on top. All right, let's go for something a little bit more cute and less serious. Now, if we go to the Great Deku Tree, which most people will probably know where this is, but in case you don't, it's in the Lost Woods, right in the middle of the Lost Woods. You can warp straight there. You can actually find a secret room inside the Great Deku Tree, which will give you a special little side quest to complete as well. If you go up to his mouth, you can actually peek inside of this room, but there's actually a way in thanks to our new Ascend ability. If you go into the bottom of the tree, right by the cooking pot, and use Ascend, you can find a secret room where a little is there beside a bed. He is trying to actually decorate this whole area as his secret hideout with silent princesses and blue nightshades, and he requires you to bring him some more in order to have them glow at night, which is pretty neat. Once you help complete that side quest for him, he'll actually state to you that it's a secret to everyone, which is a direct reference to the original Legend of Zelda, where you'll find the secret mod Goblin Cave, where he'll also tell you it's a secret to every potty and will give you some rupees. Just like the original game, you can get to the top of the tree by just using Ascend in this game instead of having to climb all the way on the outside, and you can have another side mission where you will be put on a scavenger hunt. Here's a spot that you just have to make a return to, the Shrine of Resurrection from the very beginning of Breath of the Wild. It's the spot where Link woke up after a hundred years of being in slumber and being healed. You can actually go back and revisit this same spot. Inside, everything is natural now. There's no Sheikah technology, but there is a natural hot spring that can heal Link. So technically, it's still the Shrine of Resurrection or healing. So it's a nice little touch, but so you can go beyond this to drop down lower. You can also burn that Yiga flag in order to find a chest. But yes, you'll find a Yiga hideout area where if you try to grab the banana, Yiga soldiers will appear, and once you take them out, you'll get a brand new blueprint, which gives you... Yeah, you, you get the beam cycle. It's not exactly the Master Cycle Zero, and it controls terribly, but you know what? It's a neat reference. That's all that matters. But yeah, it's cool that they kind of put this place back in this game as well. I wish they would have added a little bit more in this location, but still, you know, it's fun to revisit where you started Breath of the Wild and I guess get something out of it. Next up, we have Sternita Hot Springs in Northwest Hebra. If you go to this region, you'll find a cave that's very skinny along the cliffside, and you can actually squeeze in here to find one of the coolest looking caves in the entire game. Now, there seems to be some like little rock hut that's in here also. I love to like crawl in there and you can move a rock and like hide in there. There's almost like no reason for it to be there. There might've been a chest originally that I already got, but yeah, there's nothing really here. I like to close myself in here because I'm weird. But as you go in deeper into the cave, you can actually drop down and see a boulder right down the area you're dropping at. Move this boulder over and crouch in order to get yourself through a small, tiny network of tunnels, which will lead you to a beautiful looking room. This is a room full of giant ice crystals that glow, and it looks so beautiful. It's just an awesome spot, and I wish Zelda Tears of the Kingdom had more spots like this. There's really nothing in here besides tons of different mushrooms, and just the fact that it's a really cool hiding spot. It's an awesome place to just go and visit within this game, and it reminds me a lot of the Ice Cavern from Ocarina of Time, or one of the ice caves from Twilight Princess. I legit think it has to be a reference to one of those, because it looks spot on, especially to the Ocarina of Time one. But it's just such a beautiful area. I highly recommend you guys all just come experience this place for yourselves because it really is serene. And finally, we have Mapla Point Cave, which is at the very southeastern part of the map. You can get here by flying or by finding the side quest. So if you want, oh wait, hold on.
Okay, anyways, you can actually fly there with any of your Zonai devices and you'll see a giant water stream coming out from this cave. Now you can actually find this on the beach on the other side of Mapla Point and it actually kind of makes the side quest a little bit more entertaining and fun where you can build a boat and follow these bottles of messages that someone is sending out. And you can follow them all the way to the inside of a cave where someone has been stuck behind a boulder there for a very long time and been shooting out messages that's been arriving at Mapla Point's beach. And you will find Shaman and finally rescue him. There's also tons of stuff to collect in this area, but it's a cool little cove that you get to sit in after you've already completed this side quest. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. If you guys learned something new or are just excited to see these locations, make sure you leave a like and subscribe and comment your locations down below. Thank you so much for tuning in and like always, I'll see you all on the next one. See you guys.